You operate in the world of AI. I know that you're following the headlines and technological developments closely. You know, the, the executives over at Alphabet and Google were ready for the questions. When are you going to pull back the curtain? But what did you as an industry participant actually learn this week about Google's latest in artificial intelligence? Sure, Ed. I think this is a fascinating topic for all of us. Uh, it will affect all parts of society, as we can uh, understand. Uh, definitely, you know, there's a lot of talk after Google's earnings report, uh, for sure, but that also indicates a lot about the macroeconomic environment, not just about chat GPD, right? Uh, the digital ad business going down, not, not growing as fast as it was last two years like that, so sort of a macro trend. Uh, but the most interesting part has been uh, ChatGPT and uh, this investment in Anthropic, as well as the internal um, arms of Google all coming together, which was uh, a great thing to see. Uh, for example, the internal arm, Lambda, which is the language uh, models arm, right? Uh, right? They are now using that um, for the, the apprentice BARD app internally to test. They've asked all their employees to start using it and sending feedback, right? That's an interesting move. Uh, the other uh, DeepMind, um, which also has, you know, the, almost the best AI algorithm at 2010, right? That was a London-based company that they acquired and uh, it sort of become the, you know, part of Google. They have also in, um, asked DeepMind to, you know, get involved in this uh, in this race. Uh, and of course, the anthro Anthropic has, uh, everybody's noticing is just another one of those investments, which is a significant investment, uh, still less than Microsoft's multi-billion dollar investment in open AI. Uh, so I feel Google is, uh, of course, trying to uh, match up the speed as well as using all uh, its AI uh, methods to catch up. Uh, right. And it's possible it may even go, you know, better than anything else out there, considering the advances uh, it has already made. Um, I think in the world of the, AI. The, the other conversation that's kind of emerged over the course of the week is who's ahead and who's best positioned to commercialize artificial intelligence. The stock market is also paying attention, right? We, we, we look at some interesting names, C3 AI, Big Bear AI, even BuzzFeed, whose stock has been all over the place because of their relationship with OpenAI for the use of ChatGPT. We're showing just some of the jumps on Friday, Big Bear up 44%. What was your conclusion this week about who is leading in the field of artificial intelligence? Is it Microsoft? Is it Google? Uh, that's a tough question, uh, frankly, and I would, I would reflect upon it in a different way. I think the race is much longer uh, than this year. Uh, frankly, ChatGPT, generative AI, uh, which is a larger uh, umbrella in which synthetic data, language models, all of these other types of algorithms are also being used, right? Uh, it is still a little far away from being where, let's say, Google search is for today. So it's I think it's out in the open where the competition will land. And let's say Google uses all its data, all its algorithms, all its investments towards that. And then Microsoft is doing the same if it integrates OpenAI with, let's say, Microsoft Teams and uh, all of its applications. Uh, will the search, uh, consumer search move from, let's say, Google to Amazon product searches or within the Microsoft apps? Or maybe Google will develop something much better. That's a, a sort of a debate we keep having every day. Um, right. But I think it's a little uh, away from the stock market, like the stock market Reactions are, I feel, quite stark to this. Uh, I would expect less stark behavior going forward because you will start seeing the improvements uh, in generative AI. Currently, it's only, uh, it's very infant. Uh, it still cannot be trusted to do many things. Uh, it can do basic stuff like replication of natural language and, you know, copies, media, um, some, you know, NDAs, contracts, etc. And so that right. those jobs may get, you know, uh, repurposed to, something more meaningful um, for some people, you know, the, the upskilling may be required and so on. So some of those things will happen, but it is still not going to be completely disruptive uh, as we are seeing at least for the next few months. We're still so a little so, far away. So say, well, give me then a taste of the here and now, the reality, right, and what Fractal's doing. You know, we started this segment by saying you are providing AI right now to Fortune yeah. 500 companies. What does that look like? What does that even mean? Yeah, so Fractal uh, is, 
we are a set of you know 5,000 people globally. We're providing tech services in AI to almost 150 plus Fortune 500 companies across all you know healthcare, you know financial services, insurance, consumer goods, retail, uh, and so on. And we, for us, uh, every strategic decision, tactical decision, operational decision that a corporate person or uh, a consumer is making, right? How can we make that better using AI? And when when I say AI, it's a much broader term to us. It is AI plus cloud engineering, which enables AI. It is you know human-centered design, behavioral sciences, which enable user adoption. So all of those things come together to help companies make better decisions. Um, we also have products uh, which help um, behavioral sciences to solve complex problems. Like uh, one of our companies, Final Mile, uh, works very closely to reduce human trafficking. Uh, to reduce HIV uh, in Africa, right. in right. Asia, you know, and so on. Uh, and other such uh, products which help in, let's say, training. Analytics Vidya is one of those companies which we invested in, which helps create the data science professional pool in the world. Uh, it's the largest training platform, uh, and right. so on. So that is what we're trying to do. We're cultivating a community of data scientists uh, who can work, you know, in this new environment because a lot of upskilling is required uh, in this uh, environment. And uh, a lot of business problems can be solved right. using AI, but there is always a human also required. So how we believe is people without AI will suffer compared to people with AI. It is not yes. AI versus human. Um, 